Okay, taking a look at target 33. 33 is about finding the roots or the zeros of a polynomial when we're given all real root type graph or situations. You guys, these questions, we like to do these roots or zeros when they're written like this. When they're written like this kind right here, where you actually have something that's in a factored form, I can find the roots or the zeros very quickly to something like that because I know that that thing's going to hit at positive 1 from this part and it's going to hit at positive 2 from this part and I can see the roots really right away fast. One thing to note though, because these are second powers, those would be considered double roots. So 1 would be a double root, 2 would be a double root, and that's what you get the fourth degree polynomial. Now look at this kind. The kind for target 33 is you have to do a little bit of thinking and calculating to shrink it down to something that looks like this because then I can see the roots of where it's going to hit the x-axis. Now, in this case, this is a factorable situation. So realistically, this just comes down to factoring. A generic rectangle in a diamond problem context, and I'm going to put the x squared there, the 8 there, get 8x squared up there. The middle number is negative 6x. And this is not a teach you how to factor video. This is do you know how to find the roots of the intercepts. But the idea is you use factoring to do it. So then I factor and two numbers that multiply to 8 and add to negative 6. Um, that would be negative um, 4 and negative 2. Negative times a negative makes a positive, and they add to that number. I put them back over here, and then I get x minus 2 going this way and x minus 4 going this way because x times x makes that. Negative times negative makes positive here, and I bring those down, and those are my two factored forms. And once I have it factored, then it's very easy to see the roots. The roots would be at 4 and 2. This was a second degree polynomial because that highest power was a 2, and so I have two answers or two roots. Next, this is a third um, power, so I should have three roots. But the issue is I've got an x cubed. The only thing we know at this point of how to factor is stuff with x squareds. So I notice that they both have an x in it, so I factor that out first, and I get x times, um, then I would have x squared here, and then I would have 4 here. Multiply that out, and this is what you're looking at. That would be x cubed minus 4x. Now, you do need to notice that that property back here is difference of squares. Because I have a perfect square x squared, I have a perfect square number 4. Perfect square means those are square rootable. So I can do that. I can take the square root of that and get x. Take the square of that and get 2. And then I just do plus it and minus it. And that's how you factor something short like that. It's called the difference because it's subtraction of two perfect squares. Then that gives me the full factored form. Then this answer would generate a root of 0. This piece would generate a root of negative 2. And this one positive 2. So the three roots are 0, negative 2, and 2. And the key to being able to find the roots when you, when you have it in the long form or the standard form of a, uh, an equation is to factor it because then you can figure out the roots.